Do you know what? I just changed out of a Guns N' Roses t-shirt, so I'm glad I didn't wear that because then we would have been matching a bit too much. Put it back on, dude. I went with this one instead. That's fine. That's a good one too. But we do have a, a couple of other things in common. Uh, I'm originally from the UK, as you may be able to tell. I can so, hear that. So we are Brits abroad, and we're both we're both into our photography. I'm actually a professional photographer. Um, professional photographer <laughs> well i'm an unprofessional musician and for good reason there we go um, but i know that you got into your photography more when you were traveling and that's kind of how i did as well yeah i think for me it was you know I, I put the put the drugs down and was left with clear vision i was like oh my goodness look at all these places i've been traveling for all these years and don't remember um and it was just a way to capture I guess moments I'd missed out on throughout my life, you know, and I started just taking photos of places I went to and it actually, it got ruined a little bit for me because we went on tour and we had our photographer out with us at one point and coolest guy in the world. So nice. Uh, knows what he's doing. I don't know what I'm doing, but that he was like, Oh, you're going to do that. No, no, do this, do this. And, I, and it kind of like took the fun away from me. So I put it down for a little bit. Um, but now, uh, uh, now that he's not with us anymore, uh, I picked it back up again and I enjoy it again. <laughs> so, so you're going to be acting like a bit of a tour photographer when you go on the road? I'm not. I, you know what? I, I don't have much interest in taking pictures of um, really people um, or not musicians or anything like that. Danny's fantastic at capturing stuff like that. But um, I, I just really like trying to capture places. I've been to, and I'll still go through my phone now and go, oh, you know, I'll go and check out pictures of Montreal or Portugal or where I've been. And I look back and it's, as soon as I see the picture I took, it's like the rest of what was around the picture gets filled in, in my, in my brain. So I'm definitely going to be doing a lot, a lot more of that now. I haven't actually been to like Asia since picking up a camera. So that's somewhere I'm excited to, to visit. Yeah. Time. Nice. Well, hopefully soon you're going to get a chance to start doing some proper traveling again. We've got new music on the way, which gives you an excuse to get out on the road. It would be um, nice. We played a show the other day and we were supposed to play a second show um, and our bus broke down. So it wasn't COVID that took us out. It was a broken starter generator or something. <laughs> Start. <laughs> Good. And how, did it, how does it feel being back on stage now after this, after this time that we've had? It's... You know what's so weird? As soon as I stepped foot back on stage and played that first note, it was all of a sudden like the last two years hadn't happened. I felt like I'd played a show the day before. I felt like I hadn't left, which is weird because a lot of a lot of my friends that went back out on stage for the first time in 18 plus months were like, oh, it's the craziest feeling. Like it was unlike anything I've ever felt before. So I, was, I went on there anticipating um this huge moment where i'm like oh and the heavens open up but it didn't happen I, it just felt very normal which i actually took to be quite a good sign because i feel mm. like it, it just made me realize that that is just part of my dna it's part of who i am um and the fact that it felt so i felt so at home uh it was it was a good feeling yeah nice so speaking about your DNA and, and who you are, we have this new album and it's called See What's on the Inside. I've had a chance to listen to it already. I have to say it's fantastic. I feel like you've kind of, you've hit a, a new level with your sound, but it also feels like you've kind of refined it down to what maybe you originally wanted it to be. Would that be a ca the case? That's, you know, it's so funny. That's exactly the case. And I think the, the way that this record uh, came to be is is exactly that it was I, I was sat here and I was I've had all this time off and finally I've got to stop being Ben Bruce and I've got to just be dad and a husband for like two years and it's brought me so much joy and so much comfort and so much happiness it got me thinking like man I've not felt this way about asking Alexandria since I can't even remember when, since I started the band. And that just got me thinking, like, why did I, why am I doing this? Why did I start this band? 
And the more I thought about it, the more all these memories came up of how excited we were as kids to just be in a tiny little drum room together. And I remember when we wrote the final episode, we, we played it over and over and over again at rehearsals like 30 times um, before going out for a cigarette break and coming back in and playing it 30 more times. And I was like, damn, we've lost that. Um, which I think is super normal to happen when it becomes your career, so to speak, and people start adding themselves and putting their hands in and you, you just become part of this machine that's, that's almost designed and built uh, to do things for other people. Um, and I, it made me sad to think about that. So, you know, I called the guys and I was like, we need to recapture that love um, and that passion and that magic. And it only happens when the five of us are together. It really does. Um, yeah. And so this is the first record we did together in a studio in 10 years. First time in 10 years, all five of us were in a room together making a record. Um, and it sounds magic. And, it's, and it's, it is exactly that. It's what we always wanted this band to be. And it's just five best friends making rock music as loud as we possibly can. Um, we weren't writing it for anyone else. We didn't know, is anyone going to like this? Much like when we did Stamp and Scream, all we knew is we fucking loved it and we had a blast doing it. And I feel like when I sit back and I listen to the record now, I can feel that, that excitement and that energy. Like I just listened to Fame again uh, earlier on and the very end, if you listen past the rinsing and it all ends, it goes, bah! If you wait like five seconds, you can hear James laugh through the drum uh, <laughs> microphone. He, he, he captures a laugh and I was like, oh, you got to keep that there because it just shows how much fun we were having. The song ends and he's just laughing because it, it, you know, and I think that's, that's how this whole record was created. Yeah. Well, you've got this song, which is called If I Could Erase It. Mm -hmm. And it talks about if you could start over. Yeah. So does it feel like you're kind of giving your chance, yourselves a chance to start over? I think so. Yeah, completely. Um, and it's, it's funny because I think everyone has things in their life where they're like, ah, damn, that part of my life was shit. Or there's parts of that part of my life that was shit. And if I could get rid of them, I would. Um, but obviously you don't get that. You just, you have to move on and learn and grow. Um, and that's part of everyone's journey uh, in life. But this, you know, I read something, I can't remember where I was, but it was a quote from somewhere and it really struck me hard. And it was, um, it was like a message. It was a letter to a daughter or something. Um, and basically it ended with, you know, I hope you're happy. I hope you find this, I hope you find that. And I hope if one day you're not happy, you find the strength and the courage to restart, to start over. Um, and I think that's what it came down to. You know, it's so scary when you're in a position like this to be told by people in the industry, you have to do this or people will forget who you are. And it's like, well, that's fucking brutal. And so you, you kind of just keep going uh, in the hopes that that doesn't happen. Uh, and for us, it was finally the strength to not give a fuck about that. It was finally the strength to just, we want to do this the way we want to do it and sound the way we want to sound for ourselves. And I think everyone can take something from that in, in life. And I think a lot of people have during this pandemic, a lot of people have gone, you know what? I don't like my current work situation. I'm out. And they've taken this time to learn a new skill or craft and, uh, or relocate. Um, and I think, uh, I think it's, it is, it takes courage. It takes a lot of courage. Yeah. And I feel like the lyrics on this album, there's a lot of that kind of sentiment in it. Like, how do I want this to look moving forward? And kind of taking taking stock of, of where you are and where you want to go, right? Yeah, and you know, it's I keep I've mentioned it a few times, but that it's I think it's one of the most powerful lyrics Danny's ever written. Um, but when "Find Myself" starts, uh, the music comes in, it's this beautiful guitar, and then it stops, and you just hear Danny ask the question, "How do I kill myself?" And you're like, hmm. "Whoa, that's deep." But then he continues the sentence and says, or at least the parts that have been created to please. And that's that same thing. It's like, I, I feel like I've been molded into this person and it's not necessarily who I am. How do I leave that behind and continue on as, as me when everyone has pushed me to be this version for this long? Yeah, yeah. 
do you remember a catalyst moment for this album? Do you remember a, a, a point where you kind of went, you had an idea and you're like, oh, I think this is the direction I want to go in? Um, honestly, no, because I think we kind of just let it happen the way it needed to happen. And I think um, for the creation of this record, we wanted to create it much like when we were kids and started the band. So it was very much, we're in a room and there's our instruments. There's no programming there's no synths there's no anything on the computer screen that can aid us which is something that i think we fell into in a lot of records it's like oh there's this cool section what do we do oh we'll fill it with this beep, 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 bop, bop, and cool next um so for this one it was more of just a case of let's play let's jam let's be a band and so we didn't have there was no moment where it was like this is what the record's gonna sound like it, it kind of just this is what happened when the five of us were given our instruments and put in a, in a big room together. Um, and we just ran with it. You mentioned already that it's the first time you've been in the studio together, all together. What difference does that really make? Like in the, in the final product, in the sound of the album? You know, it, it's, um, I'm the primary songwriter. I have been since day one, but the difference is when we did stand up and scream, in particular, there was us, there was the group, there was the band, and I would come up with the initial idea. And then there were these other four lads that were just as passionate as me that would be like, oh, this, this, this. And having that, not just that input, but that energy and that passion thrown around the room towards each other is, is to me when magic happens. And you've all come together and created this one thing. Um, and that's, that's what happened with this album. It was so important and so refreshing to sit down um, and, you know, I've got a guitar riff idea and I'm playing it. And for the first time since we wrote, I remember writing, um, I was once possibly maybe perhaps a Cowboy King, Jesus, that's a title, mm -hmm. on our debut album. And yeah. I remember playing this riff and Cameron was like, oh, why don't you do this? And it was just dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig, two chords. And I was like, amazing. That collabor collaborative energy just made the song that much better. And on this album, I remember sitting there with, riffs maybe it's in alone again or fame and Cameron going oh yeah and grabbing his guitar and just playing next to me and then sound joining in and I was like man I've not felt this energy since we did stand up and scream and that's so important and it's, uh, it's so vital to what makes asking Alexandria so great and it's it's a shame that over the years that that kind of diminished a bit, but I'm super thankful that we figured that out now and uh, it's back to being the way it should be. And tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe that usually you as a band have the music first and then you kind of get the lyrics together in the studio. Is, has that happened on this album as well? Or has things changed there as well? Things changed there as well, because normally it would be, I've written the songs and I've gone, here you go, guys james will fly in do his drums sam will come and play his bass and it's, it's done the song's done all of it's built and it sounds great and then danny comes in here's the song for the first time mm. and writes his lyrics to the song whereas this time because we were all together danny was there throughout the creation of the music too um and so ideas and sounds were just going and we went we went song by song this time, instead of just, here's the album, Danny, here's an album's worth of music. Um, it was more, oh man, this song's here. And so he was able to be in the moment and be part of the energy that created that song. And so he could reciprocate that energy with his vocals. Um, and then we would move on to the next one. Yeah, and, and speaking on that, at what point during the actual process do you think about how these songs are gonna sit next to each other as a cohesive project? that was actually a huge uh, conversation about this record and it was it was really refreshing too because the, the the owner of better noise uh, our record label um alan kovac he's he's a huge fan as are we of like the beatles and elton john and led zeppelin and how records tell a story mm. take you on a journey and it wasn't about i need this single to be this long for this format and this is going to be for radio and this is going to be for Spotify playlists. It was none of that. He was very um, upfront with us about saying, where do you want your fans to go? What's the journey you want them to go on with you as far as the record goes? Forget singles, forget 
all of that, what do you want the record to do for people? So we spent a long time sort of placing them together and so much so that um, when you listen to the actual vinyl and you go through the record and you finish side A, you've ended side A, the first half of your journey ends with Find Myself, which is so low. And you're just kind of in this black hole, a puddle of a person, just like, whoa, like I feel drained. And you flip it over and put side B on. And it's almost like a hand reaching down and pulling you out um, with, um, you've made it this far and it's the highest of highs. So you've gone from the lowest of lows to being bolstered up and held up as high as you could possibly be. And so all of these things went into, there was so much thought and consideration that went into the flow of the record. And how does it make you feel as a listener? And once you sit, sit there and you finish it, even the, the last song, The Grey, um, we put, I can't remember the exact amount, but that droning sound at the end is, is like somewhere around between 80 and 100 guitars. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, it's, it was to represent all the layers of this album. And it's just this droning sound. So it's kind of like you just sit there and you can take in what has just happened in the last 45 minutes. And each of those sounds represents a layer in, in the record. So a lot of thought went into it. With streaming and things like that now, there's, it's, it's easier and easier to not listen to an album in its entirety. Yeah. So it's really good that I think that you guys have actually paid attention to that because maybe for other artists it's becoming less and less important are you the kind of person personally that sits down and listens to albums back front to back oh yeah I, and i love it because i i feel like that's how th- whoever created the record wanted it to be taken in and and yeah. it is it is supposed to be a journey and so it's a shame when you you do pick and choose it doesn't you don't get the scope of what the record is trying to trying to tell you and um my hope with doing this is that i know most people probably consume it in bits and pieces on platforms i understand that but my hope is that by doing it this way and creating this journey people do discover it and it can become sort of like a timeless record that's still in 20 30 years time you can still put the record on and still go on an, an insane journey with that album because who knows how people are going to consume music in 20 years and as a band you talk about journeys you've been on quite a journey yourself over the last decade or so yeah. and now you have this song called fame so let's talk about success at this point in your career what does success mean for ask, asking alexandria so fame is more about the um the romanticized version of fame, the fame that everyone thinks that they want, but not the horrible dark side of it that no one really realizes until you're in it. Um, And so for us, I think success has become more about, are we happy? Are we enjoying what we're doing? Because it was such a significant part of our career where we clearly weren't happy people, you know, and um, you end up leaning on, Uh, things like alcohol and you become dependent on drugs and just there's a big smile on the outside but on the inside it's not there you know and I think so for us success now is measured in are we happy are we smiling are we good are our families healthy are we healthy Um, and if that's the case you know then things are successful at, at that moment you know if I can go away on tour and come home to a happy healthy family and provide for them then it's been a successful tour um and it's just it's just another and just a different way of of looking at it. And I think you, you just have to learn. And there's not, no way you can learn other than by going through the shit and growing and and being there in the thick of it. And that goes for anything in life. I think you know we all, even as young as when you're at school, you know, and people are taking your lunch money or what have you. It's they're all trials and tribulations that we have to go through and learn and, and adjust and find yourself at the end of it. But yeah, fame definitely addresses that journey of when when I was a kid, I wanted to be famous, but I didn't know what famous was. To me, being famous was playing my guitar and making songs. That was that was the extent of my thought process as a kid. Like, yeah, I want to play guitar forever and I want people to love it. You don't think about the all the lonely hours and days and weeks and months away from people. You don't think about people sort of 
molding you into what they need you to be so that they can make money for themselves. You don't think about any of that stuff. You don't think about how it feels when you've poured your heart and soul into a song and strangers go, that fucking sucks. You suck. And it's like, whoa, like there's so much shit that you just don't realize. Um, even so, so much so to the point that a few years ago I got um, someone threatened to come and kill my children. I'm like, what? This is just not nice. This isn't yeah. a nice world to live in, the fame, fame world and the fame bubble. And that's what that song is about. Basically, Danny's saying, oh, you think you want this. Oh, you think you want this and this and this? Well, it fucking sucks and it's not going to make you happy. Um, so, yeah, it's been, it's been a hell of a journey. But I think, you know, we're all old enough and ugly enough uh, to have come out the other side and, and, and enjoy it and appreciate it for what it is now. Um, and we've learned to, to separate. It's like, there's, there's this, there's real life. And then there's this. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're in a really good place as a person and as a band. So that sounds like success to me. So I wish you continued success. I've really enjoyed talking to you. So thanks very much for your time. Of course, mate. Thanks so much, dude. Take care.